And now I can show you the mat that's been underneath here. So let me zoom out. So like I said, although this wasn't part of the uh, remote dual YCS, this was something that happened between now and then. Uh, this was the San Diego Comic-Con event. And during that event, they had a special mat that was only available in very limited quantities that you could pick up. And that mat is... This beautiful Stardust Dragon mat. Oops, sorry, I bumped my mic there. The absolutely beautiful Stardust Dragon mat. Uh, one of the key, uh, key monsters from the 5Ds era of Yu-Gi-Oh! Such a fantastic looking card art. Such a fantastic looking mat. It's got the field zones. And it's perfect for our opening for Dawn of Majesty. Because all the cards, well, a lot of the cards, are based around Stardust. So we got our field center that I got from the uh, the event that I participated in. The premiere event, so we'll put that up here. And we've got our box of Dawn of Majesty. Fingers crossed to pull something cool, because there's some really nice stuff in here. Uh, what are you going to do after you're done opening all your card packs? Um, I am not sure. <laughs> the, the plan was that I'd have a lot more packs today to open, but unfortunately, uh, when I had asked for my locals prizing to be shipped with my remote dual prizing, they, uh, they forgot to do that. <laughs> So I still have some uh, some participation prizes, specifically some OTS packs that I have uh, to open eventually that I have not gotten yet. Let's pop open our Dawn of Majesty. Come on, let me pop it open like the display. I actually got the, the only box that was available at my locals. They had one box left, so I grabbed it. We'll see if that gives me extra luck, or if I just got the garbage uh, garbage box no one wanted. I'm going to take all the packs out, I think. Just so I have easier access to them. And we can zoom things back in. Uh, so something interesting happened on the server today. Wandering Trader selling skulk, skulk sensors at spawn. Not sure if it's still there, but you don't have any emeralds. Yeah, the skulk sensors and other unobtainable uh, 1.17, 1.18 stuff is uh, is being sold by the Wandering Trader. If you don't find him, uh, find it from him, you'll find it from someone else. Or you'll find it from a, a future Wandering Trader, so don't worry too much about that. So here we go. First pack of Dawn of Majesty. Let's get into this. These are all brand new cards to me. Oh, and starting off with Converging Wills Dragon. I really wish they called this the car uh, the same name that they had in the OCG, Converging Wish Dragon. But I think there was a issue with a different archetype that would have made this unplayable, so they had to change it to this. Unfortunate, but there we go. Monster Assortment. You got a bunch of ghost tricks and like uh, tune, uh, tune cards in here. Really cute. Dragon like uh, Lark Perrin, which I've heard is actually a pretty decent card. It is a six star exceed, which six stars tend to actually be pretty playable. Uh, Flying Red Carp. We've got uh, actually a very very strong card if you're able to meet its activation. Its activation is. Very difficult to meet, but it's cool if you can. Uh, its effect is, you, you can discard, a uh, quick effect, you can discard one water monster, this card gains 500 attack. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can tribute this card to special summon one fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster from your hand or deck. You can only use each effect of flying red carp once per turn. So, very easy summoning doesn't have any restrictions to that summon except for the fact that you have to destroy a monster by battle and he's only got 500 or 
a thousand if you boost him attack. So that's the toughest part, but if you manage to use it, you could kill a thing like, uh, I think it's like Celiocanth, or you can special summon a thing like Celiocanth, which is very strong. Man, I love chicken strips. Fuck your chicken strips! Happy birthday, Typo! Hope you're having a great one. Good to see you. Uh, we've got, oh god, okay. Uh, Volofernes, uh, the Darkest Dragon Doom Rider. We've got Man Mounting a Dragon. And apparently he is also a dragon. It's a seven star. Alright, interesting. Ooh, and the first of the Sioux ships. Yes. Love the Sioux ship archetype so much. Uh, so this is Gunkin Sioux ship Ikiru class Dreadnought. Those Sioux ships are based around Sushi warships because there's a, a specific way of spelling uh, Sushi and warship in Japanese that make them very similar. So they've played around with the spelling or the, the specific kanji to make it Sioux ships. Hey, George, how are you? Good so far, no drinks yet, but you did get high for the first time, it doesn't do much to you. This edible ain't shit, oh. There's the first card of our Sioux ships, absolutely love them. Oh, and there's the second card of our Sioux ships, nice. Gunkin Sioux ship Ikira. I hope we get the, uh, uh, the vanilla monster as well, so I can read through their Yelp review of a card effect. Yeah, you can see they're actually, like, giant... Uh, pieces of sushi. Then we got Goki finishing move, because Goki needed more support, and Baby Mud Dragon. Good, thanks. Good to hear, George. I am doing pretty good myself. Uh, we're opening up a bunch of... Uh, well, first we opened up a bunch of prizing from the largest Yu-Gi-Oh! online event. Um, and I, I had participated in it, which I was very happy to do so, uh, and now we're opening up the Premier, uh, set, technically not released yet, it's only been available as a, as a Premier event, um, but we're opening up Donna Majesty. I'm very excited, hopefully we'll pu we'll pull a Starlight, fingers crossed. You're grinding to enchant your sword or pickaxe, sounds good. Uh, yes, Draco, you claim all magic -y cards you pull. Oh, but I like magic -ies. There we go, we got another one for the Sioux ships. This is some, uh, some, their field spell, which is Gunkin Sioux Shipyard Seaside Support Spot. Try saying that ten times fast. You can see it's like a full, uh, a full ship docking site. They're filling up on rice and different types of rolls, and I think this is like egg. A bunch of different stuff, all to uh, to supply our Sioux ships. Put those off to the side. Then we've got, oh, we've got some uh, some '80s workout characters. Well, actually, this might even be '60s workout characters. The Arrow Picks Three. Then we've got Despian Tragedy, the new archetype that synergizes, or rather, that uh, works with. Um, in, in the story of Dogmatica and that kind of stuff, Dogmatica, Trivergate, all that. We get Despian, magic -y Unlocking, there's our first magic -y card, and it is a Counter Trap. Decks with Counter Traps tend to be pretty cool. Holy crap! What a secret rare to pull! Oh my gosh! The Iris Sword Soul to start things off. That is incredible. Such a nice card. This is actually one of the top secret rares you can pull. We'll read through its effect real quick. Uh, during the main phase, if a monster whose effects are negated is on the field, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can activate one of these effects uh, on where it was special summoned from. Special summon from the hand, you can special summon one monster from your hand. From the deck, you draw two cards. And from the extra deck, you destroy one of those monsters special summoned from the extra deck. You can only use each effect of the Iris Sword Soul once per turn. Very great secret rare to start things off. Isn't that the most expensive card in the set aside from the Starlight? 
uh the most expensive synchro at the moment or uh special uh secret rare sorry at the moment is actually synchro overtake followed by ready fusion or no sorry followed by aluber the jester of despia then followed by ready fusion then followed by iris sword soul but i believe this card has the highest staying value for its uh for its uh its price i think this will stay uh up there in value so let me grab a sleeve for this real quick because the other ones i believe are up there just because of the hype i mean ready fusion i can see some uh some reasons for it to be up there but the other two not so much there we go there is the iris sword soul such a great secret rare to start things off and you can get some absolutely trash secret rares in this set so i'm so glad that i pulled this one all right we'll put her off to the side just like so we'll get through the rest of this then we've got shinobi insect uh hagakura mino one of the new insect based link monsters they've uh they've started supporting insects a lot which is cool we got Triamid loading, because Triamids needed more support because everyone was playing Triamids. Uh, margin trading, and Carpaponica, Mystical Beast of the Forest, adding more mystical creatures to our forest. Well, that was an incredible, what is that, second pack? Yeah, great way to start things off. Uh, SMB, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome on in. So here we go. Starting off pack number three, we've got uh, Guy Armor, Dragon Shell, Renomaly, Esperanza Glyph, Renomaly, Akambaro Figures, Dimmer Synthesis, and Link Apple. Oh, I love the look of this card. It's so cute. It's also like an upstart for a Link based deck. You can reveal this card in your hand, banish, face up, one random face down card from your extra deck, then special summon this card. If the banished card was a link monster, uh, or sorry, then special summon this card if the banished card was a link monster. Otherwise, discard this card, and if you do, draw one card. So you reveal it, banish a card from your extra deck, and then either draw a card or special summon it. So it's not bad. Here we go, we got Masters Dipl uh, Diploman, Sam Bell the Star Bonder, Magicky Duo, and Cosmic Slicer Zerol. Trying to find a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. What rarity are you looking for with that? Eh, let me pull myself a little closer. I feel like I'm falling behind. There we go. All right, Error, see you in a bit. A common? Oh, that shouldn't be too hard to find. Are you looking for it for a super poly target, or are you doing it for uh, for an actual, um, like, Preta plant based deck? There we go. We got Glacier, Aquamador, Two Toads with One Sting. Two Toads, One Sting. Oh, here we go! Here is the Sioux Ship Vanilla Monster. Super Poly Target. Nice. Gotta have those Super Poly Targets. Alright, so we're gonna read through this. As you can tell, it has an absolute wall of text for its, uh, for its description. Well, let's get through this. So this is designed similar to a Yelp review. Uh, finally got to visit this... Let me turn the music down a little bit. Uh, finally got to visit the, this harbor, this harbor specialized in Gunkin Sioux ships that I've been curious about for a while. The premium Shari here is limited to 2,000 Sioux ships a year, exactly why it has a 2,000 attack, um, and uses specially developed smooth aged rice, giving it extra boldness and not found anywhere else. The classy atmosphere made my heart sing too. The Gunkin Sioux ship has several, uh, uh, sorry, has served a perfect balance of vinegar, nigiri, 
Uh, shine and shape, demonstrating exquisite artisanship. The owner told me we are introducing rich yet mellow scented Edo front red vinegar in the near future, which I'm really looking forward to. However, I was disappointed the surrounding seas were a little noisy, so we're giving it four stars with hope for improvements in the future. Uh, apparently, that reference of being surrounded by water is one of the is a callback to a, I think it was an IGN review of a uh, a Pokemon game, one of the original Pokemon games, where they would have given it a higher ranking, but they gave it a higher rating because there was too much water, because they were on an island. That was the reasoning for not giving it a higher ranking, um, and apparently that's the same reason why they've got that bit of text there, which is really funny. A funny callback for sure. Uh, Mr. Shady, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, 7 out of 10, too much water. Yep. So we got another Chronomaly, Akamaro figure, and Despian comedy. I forgot we didn't even get to the Super Air yet because I was taking so much time on the common. There is our Despian card. Another Gunkin Suship Ikuru class Dreadnought. Another Gunkin Suship Ikura. Goki finishing move and Baby Mud Dragon. That felt like the exact same ending to that pack. Uh, we've got Swol Slower Swallow, Giggity, uh, Pazuzul, Despian Tragedy, Gunkin Suship Shari, ooh, and our first Ultra Rare, High Ritual Art, uh, which I think is actually really good for rituals. Let me read through it real quick. Uh, this card can be used to ritual summon any ritual monster from your deck. You must also tribute normal monsters from your hand, whose total level equals the level of the ritual monster, monster you ritual summoned. Shuffle that ritual monster into the deck during your opponent's end phase. You can only activate one high ritual art per turn. That's not bad. I mean, it's definitely good if you've got a ritual normal based deck. I just don't know how many of those exist right now. Um, I guess it would be good for the... Um, for the archetype that Draco's interested in, the magic E archetype, because they've got normal monsters and ritual cards. I don't know of many other archetypes that that fits into, though. Still, very nice looking card. We'll add that to the pile. Ooh, and here we go. Here's some of the Stardust support. Stardust Trail. Love the Stardust cards. So we've got this, uh, this is one of the supports for the actual Stardust Synchron. I guess it kind of synergizes best with that. Um... I like Chiramid Loading, Beast King Unleashed, and Majestic Absorption, which is another Stardust-based support card. Uh, I think there's no good support for Starlight. Um, I think there's no good support for Starlight as we were waiting for on this... Oh, for Stardust as we were waiting for on this set. Uh, there is some really good support for Stardust. Unfortunately, Stardust is just not strong enough to live on its own nowadays. Um... Like, you can go the Synchron Stardust deck. I actually have one built pretty much um, for this. But the the problem is once you go into Junk Speeder, your opponent activates like an Ash Blossom or an Effect Veiler or an Imperm or anything like that, and your turn is over. Here we go. Alien, Stealth Muster, Flying Red Carp, Despia, Theater of the Branded, Dimmer Synthesis, and Live Twins Sunny Snitch. I like the Live Twins stuff, and glad we're getting more support for them. Very cool. Put that off to the side. Uh, we got another Master Diplomen, Sam Bell the Starbonder, Magic E Duo, and Cosmic Slicer Zero. He claimed that card as well. Uh, you bought stuff from the honey shop at spawn with diamonds, and now you feel good, and you're almost broke. Well, thank you very much for your purchase. Oh, another another one of these fantastic names. Uh, Kanahana, Saku uh, Saku Kanahana Sakuya. There we go. Kanahana Sakuya. Another spirit card. Uh, Dispatch Prazi. Uh, Gunkin Sue Shipyard. Arapex 3. And Beetroot 
uh, Bee Trooper Formation. So this is the new insect archetype that they've announced or that they've released in this uh, this set. This is basically taking the place of what would have been something like... Um, uh, Rick, what was the name of those other cards? War Rocks. Um, much better than War Rocks, but still, eh. I would have loved to see some more... Um, uh, some more of the, uh, what, are the, what is the name of those cards? Why, why am I blanking on their names? Um, uh, the patrol. Why I'm blanking, I'm totally blanking on their names right now. The, um, uh, I've got the deck right here as well. How am I blanking on your names? That's not the right deck. That's not the right deck either. Damn it! Um, the pirate troll, the pirate troll archetype. A uh, plunder patrol, duh! Plunder patrols. Um, I would have loved to have seen more support for plunder patrols, but it's cool to see some insect support, especially since we have the new insector card coming soon. We got beach trooper flying sting, which is again a counter trap for an archetype, which is cool to see. Uh, Doombearer, Psycho, Pom -pom uh, Pompus, Raten, the Heavenly General, and a Maze Attraction Viking Vortex. Look, they even stole the Plunder Patrol's ship without giving Plunder Patrol's support. <laughs> this is literally the Plunder, Plunder Patrol's ship. And they've just captured it for themselves. It's like they're trolling us. Only have to say, Live Twins, Evil Twins cards have just beautiful illustrations. They really do. They're done in a fantastic way. And the art style really fits what the card theme is about. So we've got DDD, Different Dimension Derby, Converging Wills Dragon, Pazuzul, Despian Tragedy, and our Despian Fusion, Despian Proskenian. Kind of cool to see. Another Stardust Trial, Pyramid Loading. Beast King Unleashed, and Majestic Absorption. Here we go, another Despian Tragedy. Magic Key Unlocking, Glacier Aquamador. I hate that the retrain of, of Aquamador isn't great. Two Toads with one Sting. Albion the Shrouded Dragon. I kind of thought this would have been in a higher rarity, but as a super rare, it's, it's pretty good. Um, unfortunately, this only counts as Fallen of Albaz when on the field or in the graveyard, not when in the hand, so you can't easily, easily use it for a lot of effects that other cards wanted. Um, but still cool to see. Branded Bond, Gusto Vidir, Gunkin Suship Daily Special, and Chronomaly Temple Tri- uh, Try uh trilithon trilithon. Bring the music back a little bit. There we go. And on the magic key unlocking chronomaly a combo figures, arrow picks three, uh Kanahana Sakuya, and Pendulum Treasure. Triff's new favorite card. Probably not. Uh, add one Pendulum Monster from your deck to your extra deck face up. That's a cool searcher, but I mean, you need something to pull it out, so you still need some support to make it better. I don't know if it's actually worth it. Bee Trooper Fly and Sting, Doom Bearer Psychopompus, Maze Attraction Viking Vortex, and Rattan the Heavenly General. Anyone care to explain to you why the Enchanting Table hates you so much? Uh, I believe the enchants get better over time. I think there's a little system built into it that makes them better. Use your cards for playing or just collecting. I use them for playing. I have a lot of uh, a lot of fun playing. Uh, actually, I just participated in the YCS Remote Duel event, which is why I managed to get. Where is my? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, I put it away. Uh, which is why I got this, as well as the mat, and I, I want to win a mat as well. Currently, I'm playing Tri Brigade. Uh, though before that I was playing some some Zodiac stuff, and even further before that, I was actually playing Heroes, which is why I am super excited for Burst of Destiny, as Heroes get a fantastic return to uh, 
to the spotlight with Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. I cannot wait for that set to come out. We got Chronomaly, Acombro Figures, Alien, Stealth Buster, Flying Red Carp. Oh, and there is our next Ultra Rare. It is the Gizmec card, Gizmec Tenigu uh, Teniguku, the Immobile Intellect. Now, is this the one that I'm going to use in my Morphtronic deck? This card is normal or special summon. You can take one machine monster whose attack is... Uh, attack equals its own de defense from your deck and place it on top of your deck. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one machine monster in your graveyard whose attack equals its own defense. Special summon it in defense? No, unfortunately it is not. There's another Gizmet card in this set uh, that I specifically need because it is going to be used for my Morphtronic deck, which is a deck that has never seen play, or rather has not seen play, since the 5Ds era, and I miss it so much. But it adds a little bit of extra support to it. So we got Margin Trading, Master Diplomen, Stardust Trial, and another Chronomaly Temple. So this is... Finishing off the first half of our box. You just want efficiency and unbreaking, but even when you roll those, you keep getting fortune. Like, who wants fortune on a damn shovel? <laughs> Remember at 2012, when Hero was such, as ama such an amazing deck? Yeah. Heroes were great back in the day. They're still okay. I'd say they're probably in, like, a rogue category right now. Um... Especially since the meta has kind of slowed down to not have as many interruptions. Ignoring, of course, Drytron, because Drytron's a pain in the butt. Uh, Spriggan's Interluder, Slower Swallow, Giggity DDD, Different Dimension Derby, Tailwind of Gusto, and Magic E Dragon, Andra Andrabami. The look of the Magic E cards is beautiful. So cool. Hey, Slackum. Yes, Morphtronics. You're running a Stardust Synchrons. Oh, the Stardust Synchrons. Nice. So are you happy about the new Stardust Synchron card? And uh, are you playing Synchron Overtake as well? I know that card's expensive, but it's so, so good for the deck. Here we go. Next pack. First, uh, first pack of this side. A Chronomaly. A Combo Figures. Combra figures, Aeropix 3, Kanahana, Spriggan's Interluder, and B Trooper Formation once again. Another Sioux Ship, Rotten. Ah, here we go. So this is actually for Ready Fusion, for the secret rare in the set, one of the secret rares in the set. Uh, Ready Fusion works similar to Instant Fusion, where instead of summoning a uh, any Synchro Monster, or sorry, any Fusion Monster that's under, is it 6 stars or 5 stars? One of the two. Uh, instead of summoning any of those and then it gets destroyed during the end phase, this one specifically pay a thousand life points, special summon a level six or lower, non-effect fusion monster from your extra deck, but it cannot attack, also destroy it during the end phase. So, to go with that, a non-effect fusion uh, two-star tuner. So, free monsters are always good monsters, so ready fusion can see a lot of play in some decks that will fit it. Five stars, thank you, Mr. Shady. Absolutely no, not needed with tuning. Also running Stardust Synchron in Cyber Dragons as Rampage can foolish it. Ooh, that's cool. That's a very cool tech. Uh, so we got two Toads with one Sting, another Slower Swallow, Tailwinds of Gusto, Spriggan's Interluder, and there is our next Secret Rare, and it is probably the worst Secret Rare from the set. Okay, well, I guess that kind of balances out the fact that we got the Iris Sword Soul. Uh, Sacred Scrolls of the Gizmec Legend. It is about a $2 secret rare, probably at the most, as it is specific for the Gizmec archetype. And although it's cool, uh, during your main phase, you can excavate the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, you can add one excavated machine monster whose attack equals its own defense to your hand. Also banish the remaining cards face down. You can only use the effect of Sacred Scrolls of the Gizmec Legend once per turn. Each time a machine monster whose attack equals its own defense is normal or special summon, place one counter on this card. When this card has 10 or more counters, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field whose attack and defense, uh, whose attack does not equal their own defense. So, it's, it's like the slowest 
uh, skill drain that you can possibly get. Um, it's it's a beautiful looking field spell, and it's great. Uh, it's a like a great idea for the card. It's just not a good card for secret rare. Uh, here we go. We got the magic key sky blaster. We got our vanilla magic key, another Alvi in the essence, Capricornica, and majestic absorption. Time to colonize the stream. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic with the Gizmex. Unfortunately, Gizmex just don't see that much play nowadays. We got another Slower Swallow, DDD, Tailwind of Gusto, Chronomaly, Esperanza Glyph, Dino Wrestler, Aguandrak. This is the new Dino Wrestler that we get to see. Uh, I think this has been like two years in the making. The OCG has had it and the TCG just hasn't. It doesn't really do much to Dino Wrestlers since Dino Wrestlers aren't played, but we got it. Magic -E Duo, Beast King Unleashed, Gusto Vedir, Maze Attraction, Viking Vortex. So we've still got uh, probably two more Ultra Rares to pull. So we can see some pretty good stuff. Let's see, what are what is available in the Ultra Rare? Of course, we've got the uh, Stardust Synchron that we could see. I'd love to see that. Another Sioux Shipyard, Despia Theater of the Branded, Glacial Aquamador, Different Dimension Derby. Holy shit! Holy, holy shit! Holy fucking shit! Ho holy crap! Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Sleeve, please. Holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. Uh, <laughs> so that is the card you can get from the set. This is the most expensive card you can get in the entire set. And I, uh, let me see, my mom is screaming because she heard me freaking out. Um, let me just get a quick look at the price of this card. <laughs> it's not even available on the pre-sales for Dawn of Majesty because no one has it available for sale. Um... This Starlight Stardust Dragon, from what I've seen, is worth about $1,200. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Holy crap. Let me just zoom out to show you. This is 100% the luck of this mat. Because that is the card right there. That is our Stardust Dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. This is the only box I got. This is the only box they had left at the place I went to. My locals had one box and I bought the one box. I was gonna buy a few packs, and I was like, you know what? I'll just buy the box. Why not? It, it would be a fun opening on stream. And damn right it was. <laughs> oh my god. Let, let's zoom in on this card again if we can. No, not out. There we go. Let's zoom in and get a good look at this card. Holy crap. Look at that card. It's so nice. I'm trying to show it off without the reflections of the sleeve, but I also don't want to take it out of the sleeve. Oh my god. I didn't even see it from the edge. Normally you can see a Starlight Rare from the edge and know it's coming. I had no idea. <laughs> it's a, it totally, totally sprung up on me. Fake! <laughs> it's, it's fake. <laughs> this needs a hardcover yet. Uh... This will probably replace my uh, Hita Starlight Rare inside here, because holy crap, this is so nice. There we go. Stardust Dragon, sealed away forever. <laughs> oh my god. That is my third Starlight Rare I have ever pulled. I pulled Hita. I pulled Pot of Prosperity, and now I've pulled this. Holy crap. That's incredible. Okay, well, we're putting this right here. 
because no one cares about this secret rare. It's all about this card. <laughs> and and then, then we've got that. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I was separating the two ships. I don't need to do that. Now put it in a box and in the loft, yeah. Just sealed away in like 50 different boxes. 100% faked. It's rigged for hype. I wish, I wish I had enough boxes to do that. But no, I had the one. That was my one try. I got the streamer luck. That's what I've got. Now send it your way. No. <laughs> it's good to see you, Gizmo, though. Welcome on in. Okay. To show your OTS later on. Uh, so we've got Gaia Armor Dragon Shell. Uh, yeah, I should definitely bring it to the OTS for sure. Dragon Lark, pa uh, Perrin, Alien Stealth Buster, Monster Assortment. Ooh! And we got a Gizmek. Is this the Gizmek I can play? Contribute one Machine Monster's attack. E uh, it equals its own defense. Special summon from... Yes, this is the one. Okay. This is the, uh, the Morphtronic support. Uh, this is the Morphtronic support I was talking about. So this card's effect, Gizmic, uh Naganaki, the Sunrise Signaler. Uh, you contribute one machine monster whose attack equals its own defense. Special summon from your deck, one machine monster whose attack equals its own defense with a lower level than the tributed monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add to your hand one of your banished face-down machine monsters whose its attack equals its own defense. You can only use each effect of Gizmek Naganari, the Sunrise Cider, uh, uh, Signaler once per turn. So the point is, you normal summon this card, you banish it to special summon Morphtronic Self on, and you use Morphtronic Self on to pop off. So there we go. Oh. If this kid gets a second one, you're robbing his house. <laughs> Don't you fucking do it. Maybe Mud Dragon start his trial. Master's Diplomat and Margin Trading. Now time to get another. There would be no chance of getting another. The chance of getting a Starlight Rare, a single Starlight Rare, is like... 50% per case. Per case. So that's 12 boxes of this. Out of 12 boxes, you have a 50% chance to pull a Starlight Rare. Then out of that, there are five Starlight Rares. So if you wanted to guarantee your chance of getting every single Starlight Rare, you would need to buy 10 cases. Otherwise, 120 boxes and out of 120 boxes i got the one the card <laughs> read your message further up okay um you'll join gizmo don't you dare uh by the way jake i hate you right now with my starlight luck my starlight luck has been insane every starlight i've pulled has been a fantastic starlight i i could have just as easily pulled a starlight rare version of the anti-human card and I would have been so sad. <laughs> well, I would have been very happy to have pulled the Starlight Rare. But, like, if that was my Starlight Rare, I would be I would be a little sad. <laughs> we got Jar of Generosity. Dispatch Parazi. Converging Wills Dragon. Monster Assortment. magic -E Dragon. and Uh magic -E Duo. Beast King Unleashed. Gusto Vadir. And a Maze Attraction Viking Vortex. So stream over now. I mean, I've... I've... I've there's nothing better I can do in the stream. We can see what else we get in here, but there's nothing better than what I've pulled. <laughs> there's literally no no better card in here. Glacial Aquamador, Jar of Generosity, Two Toads with One Sting, Slower Swallow, Trickstar Festival, Gunkin Suship Daily Special, Sam Bell the Star Bonder, Branded Bond, and Majestic Absorption. Sorry, I'm going through these fast because I'm just super excited. <laughs> Wish you can get one full Giz deck. I don't think Giz decks are too expensive because they've had a lot of reprints. The most expensive one is um, uh, the Gizmek 8 star. What's that called? Um, and he's had quite a few reprints. Here we go. We got Dragon Lark Perrin, Flying Red Carp, Gaimora Dragon Shell, Chronomaly Esperanza Glyph, and Gizmek Arakami the Hailbringer Hog. Hogman. Orochi, yes. Thank you, Draco. He is Mech Orochi. Baby Mud Dragon, Stardust Trial, Master's Diplomat, and Margin Trading. There's one more Stardust for you there. Good luck. Ooh. If I get a Stardust Synchron, that would be 
that would be a great way to end this off. Uh, Tailwind of Gusto, Spriggan's Interluder, Gunkin's Sioux Shipyard, Despia Theater of the Branded, uh, Majestic Mirage. I like this card. It's, it's, it's cool. I don't see it getting too much play, but I do like the card. Here we go. We've got three packs left, which means we should we should see an Ultra Rare in one of these three packs. Uh, comment one, two, or three if you think it's going to be in the first pack, the second pack, or the third pack before we open this up. Four, thanks. <laughs> Here we go. First one, we'll see if it's in this. Phenomenally, a Kambaro figures, dimmer synthesis, slower swallow, Pazuzul, Knight's End Administrators, so not in one. This is actually the support card for Knight's End Sorcerer that we didn't think we needed, but it's there. <laughs> Gunkin Suship Daily Specials, Sam Bell, the Star Bonder, Branded Bond, and Majestic Absorption. Hey, Zuki, how you doing? Had to do a bunch of work while it was sunny. The rain has meant the berries are out, and you had to make deals with wasps to get your share. Excuse me. Let's see if it's in the second one. Um, so been in the garden. Sounds great, Zuki. So what have you, uh, what have you managed to gather? And what did the, what did the wasps get? <laughs> Alright, Glacier Aquamador, Different Dimension Derby, Jar of Generosity, Dispatch Parazi, and there is our Ultra Rare, our fourth Ultra Rare, and it is a Sulfacord card that I didn't even know was in this set. I had not heard anything about this. Oh, it's a Pendulum Link monster. That's why. That's why I haven't heard about it. Okay, let me read it, because I haven't actually read the effect. During your main phase, you can add one Pendulum Monster from your hand to the extra deck face-up, and one face-up Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to the hand, as long as one of them has an even Pendulum Scale, and the other has an odd Pendulum Scale. Interesting. That's not bad. That's not a terrible card for Pendulums. Um, When you Pendulum summon a Sofa Cord Monster, you can target one of them, Add one Sofa Cord Pendulum Monster from your deck to your hand, whose level equals the Pendulum Scale of that monster. You can only activate each effect of Grand Sofa Card Musesia once per turn. That's that's kind of cool. I mean, I'm not going to be mad. I can't be mad. I have no right to be mad. Last pack. Here comes the second Starlight. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, welcome back, Typo. Despian Tragedy, Gunkin Sioux Ship, Konohana, Dispatch Parazi, Magic E, Mech Musket, Bato Buster. So we got another one of the Magic E cards. Oh, okay. That is the full box of Dawn of Majesty, and this is the best opening I've ever had. Um, literally one box is all it took for me to get the best Starlight in the entire set and I I I'm so blown away it, it's 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 here it's in my hand it's mine I actually own it it's stupid how do I have this 